Hello, and welcome to another Olivet School Chapel Talk. Today we're going to be talking about the story of Easter morning, and the way this is going to go is pretty simple. Uh, unlike Reverend Callie, I don't know how to play the guitar, so I'm not going to try to lead us in singing. I'm just going to open the word, uh, lead us in the, saying the Lord's Prayer, talk about the story, and then we'll say the recitation, close the word, and be done. So to begin our chapel, um, if you're not in a space where you're ready for worship, pause this video, um, go someplace where you can stop being distracted and think about the Lord, and let's get ready to turn to Him in His Word. I'm going to open the Word now. The Lord said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven so upon the earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. O Lord, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Amen. So you can probably see that I have something interesting up here. This is, as you can probably guess, the Easter story. I have the scene of Easter morning set up here. And so this is, you can look at this while I read the story, and then I'll talk a little bit more about what's happening here. The story comes from the Gospel of Matthew, right at the very end, chapter 28. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So, very, very early on Easter morning, two women, both named Mary, went to the Lord's tomb to anoint his body for burial. And when they got there, they saw something amazing. They saw an angel coming down from heaven. And in this, this version of the story, they actually watch the angel coming down from heaven, and they feel an earthquake as the angel appears, and as he rolls back this stone that was covering up the door to the tomb. And it says that the guards, when they saw the angel, they shook for fear and became like dead men, which probably means they fainted. And here they are, another one back here that you probably can't see. They, they fainted and fallen down. And do you know why there were guards at the Lord's tomb? Only this one version of the story talks about them, but the reason they were there is because the people who had killed the Lord, they thought maybe some, some of his disciples will come and 
take away the Lord's body and pretend that he rose from the dead, because they didn't think that the Lord could actually rise from the dead. But they were afraid his disciples would pretend that that had happened, and so they put guards. Obviously, the guards were not able to stop the Lord from rising, and they were not able to stop that angel from coming and rolling back the door from the tomb. And so here are the two Marys, and they've come to put special herbs and spices on the Lord's body, which was something that they did in those days when people had died. But instead, they find an empty tomb and an angel telling them that the Lord's not there. Now, what I want to talk about is why was Easter so powerful and so special? Because the Lord had done a lot of miracles while he was on earth. He'd already risen, um, raised up other people from the dead. He raised up Lazarus from the dead. So this wasn't even a new thing that the Lord had done in some ways. What was it that made it so amazing and so powerful and so special? What made it different from everything else that had happened? The answer is partly just that it was the first time the Lord raised himself from the dead, but there's more to it than that. And the answer, in a way, you can hear in the words that the angel says to these women. He, the very first thing the angel said was, do not be afraid. And that has a lot to do with the real power of the Easter story. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to read another version of the Easter story, because of course there are four different versions from the four different Gospels, and they're all a little different. And the reason I'm going to read this different version is because I want to hear what the angels say in that version of the story, because that's important too. They have a slightly different message. And so in that version of the story, there's only one Mary who goes to the tomb. Just the one Mary. And when she goes there, she finds nothing at all. Just an empty tomb and the cloths rolled up. The cloths that had covered the Lord rolled up. So this is from the Gospel of John. It says that Mary was there looking into the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? And she, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned to him and said, Rabboni, which means my teacher. So in this version of the story, Mary was looking into the tomb. And then she looked, she looked down, she looked a little closer, and she saw two angels sitting where the, Lord had, where the Lord's body had been lying. And what did they say to her? In the first version of the story, the angels said, Do not be afraid. In this version of the story, the angels said, Why are you weeping? Which means, why are you crying? And Mary said that she was sad because she thought someone had just stolen the Lord's body. She didn't understand yet that he had risen. And so she, she was sad. She thought that his body was just gone. And then she turned around. And who was there?
the Lord himself was there, and she didn't recognize him. But what did he say to her? Just the same thing as the angels had said, right? He said, why are you weeping? Why are you crying? And then when he said her name, Mary, she recognized that here was the Lord. So the messages that the angels gave were, do not be afraid, and why are you crying? And really, the miracle and the power of Easter is that the Lord was showing us that we don't need to be afraid, and we don't need to be sad. Because what happened when people crucified the Lord is that the Lord's enemies, the people who didn't like him, did everything they could to stop him. And the evil spirits did everything they could to stop him. And when the Lord rose on Easter morning, he showed that he couldn't be stopped. Nothing could stop him. The worst that the evil spirits could do wasn't enough to stop him from rising up from being our God, from taking care of us. And so when he said, when the angels said to the women, do not be afraid, the message is, we never need to be afraid for our spirits. The Lord is always, always able to overcome anything that would threaten or hurt our spirits. And the other message was, why are you weeping? Which doesn't quite mean you shouldn't be sad. That's not a good thing to say to people when they're sad. Tell them they shouldn't be sad. That doesn't really help. But the angels were very gently trying to say to Mary, you don't need to be sad. Look, look, there's the Lord. You don't need to be sad. When the Lord rose on Easter, he showed us that he is more powerful than even the saddest things that can happen to us. And we will still be sad sometimes. We'll still feel like we lose things sometimes, or like we don't get our way sometimes. But what the Lord has shown us is that he can always rise above those things and lift us above those things. That's the real power of Easter, the wonder of Easter, that we don't need to be afraid and we don't need to be sad because the Lord is risen. Amen. So our recitation for this week uh, comes from the Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter 24, and it's a story that you're going to learn a little later on in the week, a story called The Road to Emmaus. And the actual recitation is verses 30 and 31 of chapter 24 of the book of Luke. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. Will you please bow your heads for a blessing? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So that's the end of chapel. Have a lovely rest of your day, and you'll be hearing from us soon.